today is uh what's today august 25th 2016 and uh watching a a house get demolished right next to the church house of prayer church where we hold a lot of our family funerals and and functions Hopefully they get the lot. You know, I see they tearing down the uh, the house. Like I said, it's gonna be right next to the church. So hopefully the church will get to have, use that lot for parking, I'm not sure. I was sitting there eating my breakfast, cooked apples, and I saw people sitting with chairs, sitting and taking pictures and holding cameras. I was like, what are they doing? And I heard the noise and I was like, they down there. The moss in that house. What amazes me is when I drive past junkyards and then see this type of stuff go on. Why is that man standing there? I don't know if you can see him. It's a man standing right there. He asking for it. But it amazes me how when you see houses get demolished, all the payments, blood, sweat, and tears that went into keeping or buying that house and that property just for it to end up like that. That's why I'm a firm believer in Jesus Christ. And he makes it clear that uh, this place is not our home. So many people spend so much money on houses and cars and, and temporary stuff. And I used to think uh, when I was a little younger, because I used to work for rich people as a caddy at the golf course, and I used to hear them complain about their problems. I was like, man, you really didn't have any problems until you created a problem. Just say if you got, if you, if you by yourself and you get a one bedroom place someplace, let, let's say a one bedroom condo, that way you can own it at the age, at an early age in life. And, uh, and you got a job and you just wear work clothes mainly because you at work all the time and you just drive a modest car that you can pay off. You imagine how much money you can stack up from the time you're maybe 20, to 40, so that's 20 years of saving money by living modest. We're not taught this type of stuff. We're taught to go in debt, sometimes go to school to go in debt, sometimes just to shop and go in debt, but we're taught to go in debt, to buy stuff like that, for it to end up like that, getting demolished. It, it don't make no sense, you know? It, a, lot, a lot of the things, I'm 47 now, by the grace of God, but a lot of the things that I've learned in this life, I didn't get myself until late, just by, from observing, you know, the elders in my family or just people around me. And, you know, they complain about how tired and sore and beat up they are from, from work. It ain't like people are going out playing football or something. People are beat up from working jobs and doing di different things. And then uh, by the time they get to this point where they can relax or rest, their body is done. You know, they're having health issues. They didn't spend years and years at work and finally getting the house paid off. It's time for you to go on a home for somebody to take care of you. So you basically done spent your whole life paying for something like that just so you can end up in a home or someplace where somebody can take care of you where you don't want to be at because you spent your whole life building something like that. And that's just one of many examples. You know, you will hope and pray that your house that you spent all your money, time, and energy and effort paying for would not end up like that. And that you would end up um, leaving them to your children at least so they could inherit, you know, your house. That man crazy down there. I don't know why he feel the need to, to keep throwing stuff out of the churchyard. Something, all it takes is one, one something to fall and he done. Yeah, he keeps throwing stuff over. And I think, cause I think the church is at odds with those people. I think there's an issue with the the, per, the per person who owns that land and the church folks. I think they had a falling out of some sorts. So I believe they they got him down there, making sure the church lot stay clean as they do that. Man, ain't nothing worth your life. You down there worrying about picking up every little piece of rubble that falls over into the church lot. You better let them do their work and then ask them to clean up their mess. 
I don't know how long I'm gonna start him recording. These bugs are getting on my nerves. Get off me. But I thank God, um, by the grace of God, he called me into the ministry at the age of 27. And it took me to the age of um, 30 in preparation, three years of preparation to accept my calling and do what God called me to do. Therefore, um, I, I, when God called me to the ministry, I went full-time. That's the last time I worked a full-time job, 17 years ago. And ironically enough, I got fired from that job, so it was real easy for me to just leave and walk away. And I was like, well, Lord, you know, here I am. And um, I've been doing full-time ministry. The only thing I've done in my life full-time was ministry, you know, working a job. That's not, I, I did little part-times here and there because I have child support payments and and the, the courts don't care if you owe child support uh, if you're a minister or they just want some money. So I'm on my last set of three children, the youngest, which is 11, and um, I have to pay child support. So I've been full-time ministry and I don't take a salary or anything from the ministry. I do, however, eat. And uh, uh, if I have to pay for some form of housing or boarding and transportation, the ministry does take care of that, that any donations come in. But for the most part, I don't take no money from the ministry to just have money in the bank. I have no money in the bank. I don't have any credit. Everything I have is in Jesus Christ. And people, when I talk to them about that, they look at me like I'm crazy. I go, what are you going to do in case? Dude, I've been living like this since I was 17, I mean 17 years now. And I, I don't worry, God didn't provide and took care of me this long. Yeah, it, it, you know, I'm in need of a part-time job right now or something to uh, send child support some money because they've been on my neck since I left Ohio last year this time. Well, about October is when I left. Just thought I'd do a little narration while I'm sitting here watching this thing get demolished so I can get blessed by the testimony. Same God that put to feed these birds out here. These birds don't go to work. Like the scriptures say, we read the scriptures, we hear the scriptures, we react by screaming and shouting to the scriptures, but very few live the scriptures. And I believe they would say, well, it's not to be literally taken. Well, when your butt is in need of a literal God and literal person in the person of Jesus Christ, you cry out. When the doctor say you about to die, you want God to, to literally save you or heal you. So if we can believe God for healing and deliverance, why can't we believe God for provision? Oh, look at that. Just blasted through the middle. Crazy. Like I said, somebody one day saw that property and said, ooh, I like that property right there. And they built that house and they went to work, probably a whole lot to pay for it. And even in Bluefield, houses don't cost a whole lot of money, but it's just the fact that somebody paid a lot of money. He didn't stop for some reason. Somebody done paid a whole lot of money at one time for that house to see it end up like that. And like I said, I ride past the junkyard. I ride past the junkyard and see uh, cars tore up and smashed. And I'd be thinking like somebody that made a whole lot of payments on that car. I don't know why I think the way I do. It's the mindset that I've adapted after um, years of studying and reading and meditating on the scriptures and putting things into real perspective. I try to invest all my time energy and love into people, not into materialistic stuff that can be taken or just demolished like that. That way, if I pass and go on, I have made a deposit into people that can go on to the next person and each one reach one. You know, if I had a lot of money, I'd probably go around probably helping people. But the first thing I would help them understand that Jesus Christ is Lord. And the second thing I would help them understand is do not set your affections on things below, but on things above, like the scripture says. Don't put your heart in stuff like that. A house, a car, some clothes, some jewelry. Don't put your heart or affection into anything that can be taken from you. See that other little truck driving past, they, they, they pulling dirt from that, that lot next to it and taking it over to the other lot. So the church is trying to create some parking for the people so they won't have to park on the street. So they were already doing that before they started this. And like I said, I don't know if, um, 
I don't know if somehow, the ch I believe the church will end up with that lot. I don't know how, because I said them people were at odds with each other. The current owner of that house and the uh, church. But I'm believing God, uh, he's preparing. That, they're some good people. You know, traditional style church. They're some good, good people, good hearts. Been there churching for a long, long, long time. Like I said, we've we've had my grandma's funeral there, my great grandma's funeral there, I believe, my great aunts. We had a lot of our family funerals there. And they always treat us like family, you know, feed us. So I try and show them love every time I can when I come in town. That man still, is he, does he work with the company? I don't know if he work with the company. He just somebody getting in the way. I don't think he work with the company. He need to move. Nah, he don't work. I don't know. Who knows? He may be a laborer. There he goes. Jabber jaws. It's crazy. We watch houses get built. Watch houses get torn down. As much as we pay for roofs, gutters, windows, siding, roofs, carpet, furniture, TVs, telephones, cable, internet. Think about all the things that we pay for to go into having a house like that. All that money, honestly, just, just wasted. Thank God he woke me up when he did so I can Enjoy what's really important in this life. Get to the front. That's it. Last time you see the front of that house like that. Well, if you Google Earth that address, that's the only way you're going to be able to see that house the way it stood. Because you will never see it the way it stood again. Just think if they had the wrong address. My bad. Tore up somebody's house. Crazy. I was gonna call my uncle Willard. He down the street. He probably wouldn't have even tried to come up here, but he's a, he, he he subscribes to my YouTube, so he'll better watch it. Punching it up, I guess make it easy to trans transport when they come to dig it up. Snap, crackle, and pop. That's pretty much it. There ain't nothing else to watch. It's the house is gone. Whatever memories was there, or just that, memories. Crazy too, and he got the way. I'm be nosy. Yep, that's enough, folks. 15 minutes of video. So I don't know when they started, but from the time I started recording, it only took 15 minutes to end up like that. I don't know how long it took to build the house, but it probably took less than an hour to tear it down.